What's going on guys? I'm ETA Prime and welcome back to the channel. Today I am back with the Latte Panda Alpha x86 single board computer and I want to run some Android on here. More specifically, Android x86 Oreo. But before I get into testing this out on the Alpha, if you're not familiar with this little single board computer, I'm going to go over the basic specs real quick. I have made several other videos on this board so far. Playlist link is in the description. Basically, this is a super small Intel x86 computer. It has the Core M37Y30 dual core CPU. It will turbo up to 2.6 gigahertz. For the GPU, we have the built-in Intel HD615 up to 900 megahertz. 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM configured in dual channel mode. It is soldered to the board and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage, but there are more storage options you can add to this. If you're interested in finding out the full specs, I'll leave them in the description, or you can check out my other videos. So far, I've tested out Windows 10, Ubuntu, I've even got Mac OS Mojave installed on this thing. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Android running on the Alpha. Like I mentioned, this is Android x86. It is based on Oreo, and it works really well. All right, so here we are. Experience has been really smooth here. I do have working Wi-Fi. The audio is not working through HDMI. It's working through the 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the Panda. But as you can see, we do have a working Play Store here. Overall, it's been a really smooth experience. I have run into an issue where one app wouldn't launch because it was specifically designed for ARM. They do offer a bridge built into Android x86, but I couldn't get it to work correctly. Just want to go into IDA64 here show you that we are working with the Latte Panda Alpha. M3 7Y30, 4 core, 2.6 gigahertz, and for the GPU, the built-in Intel HD615. And this is Android Oreo 8.1. This is Android x86's release candidate too, so hopefully they'll have a stable soon, but this has been working really well so far. So the first thing I like to do to any Android device is run some benchmarks. Now I did set the CPU governor to performance for this one here. This is Geekbench 4. Got a really nice single core score of 3,629 and a multi-core of 6,910. Now there are phones out there that will beat this in both of these scores here, but they're much more expensive than this board is. Plus, they were specifically designed for Android in the first place. So here's a benchmark with the governor set to power save. As you can see, the single and multi-core scores are lower. So just changing the governor to performance actually helps out a lot on this board. The next benchmark I ran was Slingshot. This is from 3D Mark. Overall score, 4,694. And unfortunately, I couldn't run the Vulkan test because I'm not sure if Android supports Vulkan with Intel CPUs or not but it's definitely not available in Android x86 with the platform I'm on here. And for the final benchmark, I ran GFX Bench, I ran T-Rex on screen and off screen, and we came out with 3,317. We're not far from the top here, but we're a little off from these expensive Android phones. So using Android on a big screen TV has been a little cumbersome. Luckily, there are some apps that'll fix that. I found one today, and I know there's more, but this was on the top of the list, so I went ahead and downloaded it. I think it looks really good. Kind of adds that Windows desktop look and it just makes it a little easier to use a mouse and a keyboard with. And I know there's other Android operating systems out there that kind of come like this out of the box. You got Bliss OS and Phoenix OS. There used to be Remix OS. I don't think they're around anymore, but I've always had issues with Google Play, especially with Oreo. So I went back here to the original Android x86 build. I'd never be able to finish this video without any emulators tested. So what I did was download Dolphin. It's the GameCube slash Wii emulator from their website. Boots up fine. Works great on the Latte Panda Alpha running Android x86. I have tested Dolphin in Windows on the board. I've also tested it in Linux. And in my opinion, it works best in Windows. You have that DirectX 11 and Vulkan support. So you can up the internal resolution if you're running Windows, but it does run here really well. FPS is in the top left-hand corner. You will notice some stutters every once in a while. That's how Dolphin works. It uses shader cache and it has to cache all these shaders from the effects and things like that. But as soon as you play through one level, if you go back through it, you won't have those stutters anymore. That's just how the emulator works. I got one more here. This is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 for the GameCube. I also tested out Mario Sunshine and Wind Waker. They work equally as well. Here's PSP using PPSSPP 1.72. This is Wipeout. Rendering resolution is set at auto 1 to 1, so we should be at 1080p. I didn't have to turn anything down or add speed hacks for this game. 
Now I did notice something really funky with the sound. I got a lot of crackling when I was playing PSP games. It doesn't happen in any other application that I've tested. Only with PP SSPP. It's a little weird. One of the hardest PSP games to emulate properly, God of War Chains of Olympus, I did have to go down to 3x resolution and I turned on both of the speed hacks. And you'll still notice some dips every once in a while. Now this doesn't happen in the Windows version, just here on Android. Video playback works great here. You can watch 4K native videos from like a hard drive and they work fine in Kodi. Unfortunately, Netflix and YouTube don't support 4K because we're using different versions here. But 1080p still looks really good and you can minimize this. We're on YouTube now. I'm gonna go back to my desktop and I'm gonna keep YouTube open. So let's say you're the type of person that likes to watch two movies at one time. You can go ahead and launch Kodi, leave YouTube going and start a movie here. Or we can leave this overlay up, open up Chrome, go shopping, go to Wikipedia, do some research, whatever you like to do. It can be done here because we have this YouTube overlay. This also has that dual screen mode that I'm not sure a lot of people ever used. But if we hold down here, we can open up two apps at one time. Personally, I wouldn't use this dual screen much, but I would use the heck out of that YouTube overlay. I know it's been on phones for a long time, but it looks really useful on a big display. So Android runs pretty well on the Latte Panda Alpha. Would I run out and buy one of these specifically for Android? Definitely not. I would go with an Nvidia Shield, but to see it running on this tiny single board computer this well is pretty awesome. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Alpha, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my other videos. They are on screen now. I've tested external GPUs, I've tested RetroPie, there's a lot there, so go ahead and check it out. This has been a fun little single board computer to tinker around with. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.